the Church of Scientology faithfully records everything you ever tell them. In the last 20 years, everything is even video recorded. There's a video camera right on you. Every word you say is video recorded. And the auditor simultaneously writes it all down. You walk in the church and you believe when you confess that you are giving out privileged communication. There is a privilege called priest penitent. It's like attorney client, husband, wife. C certain things are granted privilege, meaning in the vault, sacred with sanctity to just those two people. The Church of Scientology doesn't believe in priest penitent privileged. Take a look at this post they put up in the last week on the internet on a new hate site on Instagram. Very early on in my youth between the ages of say 18 to 26 I confessed that I slept with 40-50 people over a period of six years. Just look at this site. This is straight out of my confessional folder. To shame me and humiliate me, remember, we're talking about 50 years ago, or we're talking about 60s, 70s. We're talking about, I was a nun for the next 35 years in the church with one husband, Heber, the president of the Church Scientology International, who mostly lived in Los Angeles while I lived in Clearwater for 35 years. I had no, had hardly any sexual activity, but they're focusing on that I told them in a confessional that I sold some wild oats when I was younger. Just look at what a 501c3 will go. It's bottomless. Their ethics and morality, when you think they can't go lower, they do. Beware when you give money and go in session. Beware that if you ever leave the cult, they will take data you gave up in a session and put it on the internet to attack you. Why? Why are they doing this? Okay, I'll tell you why. I have over five million views on my YouTube channel in under three years. Here it is. If you click my channel and about, you'll see subscribers and views. Here it is. The church hates that I'm revealing truths. They think this is attacking. This whistle blowing to them is enemy conduct. And here is what Hubbard said to do with enemies. This is L. Ron Hubbard's words. Spot who is attacking us? Now watch the scroll. Blood, sex. Hubbard says use sex. And boy, do they use sex. A 501c3 is supposed to be for the benefit of the community. That's why the IRS gives such a thing. This 501c3 church took out a Twitter account to solicit prostitution and it was a, an account impersonating my name, similar to my name, and they sent out the following tweets. I'm going to let you zoom into some of these tweets. This is a church tweeting prostitution against a former member of 40 years who trained to every level that they could give. 
Can you imagine them even using Louis Thoreau? This is Louis Thoreau. Pretending that my neighbor, Louis has a home near me, he lives in London, and is a client? were nuked and it all got shut down but the screen grabs show the evidence can you think Scientology has become synonymous with cult but can you even think of another cult that does this not even Jehovah's Witnesses not even the Church of Holy Rollers send out prostitution tweets this is the Church of Scientology. Now, here's the thing. Hubbard himself called his second wife a prostitute. The mother of his child, Alexis. Here's some pictures of Sarah. He went further. He called Sarah a prostitute to officials. I believe he called Sarah prostitute even to the FBI. He called Sarah, his second wife, a Russian spy. In the earlier hate, the, pa the hate page and video on me currently calls me a prostitute. But the earlier hate page on me also called me a Russian spy, if you can believe this. That I was a Russian spy Honeypot, again using sexual innuendo, that I, for intelligence, use sex to get Russian intelligence. I mean, nobody could believe that. I don't know if they still even have that hate picture, but who will buy the KGB or the whatever? They have some new incarnation. They're not called KGB. Now. That they would, that I would. Go to Russia. It's so. It was so. Hubbard does say, find a manufacturer. And because they live in the bubble, their manufacturing is sometimes laughable. So Hubbard called his wife a prostitute. The Guardian's office, following Hubbard's example, went into a rampage attack for years on Paulette Cooper. Antonio Ortega, if you haven't bought this book, please go to Amazon. Here it is. It was actually Tony. It's even in Tony's book. He documented things very, very well. Tony's book mentions how Hubbard called his wife, Sarah, a prostitute. Then the Guardian's office put out leaflets, leaflets, in, Manha in, in Manhattan to all Paulette Cooper's neighbors, saying she was a part-time prostitute, and that she had raped a baby, a two-year-old. A two-year-old! That, that because she was writing a book against disclosing Scientology crimes, she had raped a two-year-old. This is what they accused Paulette Cooper of. Her name was scribbled in toilets. I think it said, I love giving blowjobs or whatever. 
and she would get calls early in the morning. Now they did the same thing 30 years later to Tori, my beloved Tori Christman. Here's Tori's pictures. Tori has been a whistleblower way ahead of us. Tori's been, I've been out five years. Tori's been doing this 12 years. And when Tori started whistle, again, Tori wanted to just move on and live her life. But they rampage attacked her in a, in a, in a, in a binge, out of control, lunatic, non-stop attack. And one of the things they did with Tori is put her private, unlisted home telephone number on porn sites. Tori tells the tale to this day. So Tori would get obscene phone calls and had to change her phone number. But I want to, I want you to get it. This is a, this is a church that pleads in the law courts that it's a religion. That's his entitled to First Amendment. It's ecclesiastical. And this is the conduct of the darker side of Scientology. So these fantasy fiction tales have the fingerprint of the Church of Scientology. They have the smell and odor of David Miscavige. They have a hate video on me with this picture of Christopher Powell. Christopher Powell and I were in a long-term three-year relationship. And they have spun it and twisted it that I was a mistress, again trying to make us... Christopher and I dated for three years. I was on his arm at parties. This wasn't some clandestine, uh, dark, secret relationship. I. I Christopher gave garden parties in his country home. Here, this is Christopher, who was a boyfriend of mine. We were in a boyfriend-girlfriend relationship for years. Now, in the picture I'm looking at, Christopher Powell is with Prince Philip. Yes. Yes, and... he, he moved in very high circles. In one of his parties that I was at, the Beatles in the 60s attended one of his parties. I'll never forget it because George Harrison kept looking. <laughs> I was at this party. I was in a beautiful... British outfit, gown, but I wore, eh, the 60s was kind of a little bit cheeky, and I wore knee-high green socks with yellow spangled stars. I mean, when I think of it, who, who goes around in long green socks? And George Harrison kept looking at those, and I thought, it's my long green, he, he was looking at those green socks. So, I'm going off the subject. This is the kind of party Christopher Powell gave that the Beatles had I was his girlfriend, I was on his arm, I met all his connections. Yes, he was great friends with Prince Philip. But the church put found a picture of Christopher Powell and kind of she was a mistress. The spin of the church and the despicable lies show the Church of Scientology to be a pathological liar. Thank you.